Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for a video that I'm feeling a little bit nervous about sharing. So some of you will have seen that we are closing our business. We bought this online store, um, it was November 2018. So we've had it for 16 months and it's time to close the doors and we aren't selling it because it's not profitable. We've decided to just close it down. And I was talking about this with my friend Leith and I was talking about how I feel about it. Spoiler, I'm okay and I'll get to that in a minute. And I kind of was, I was saying like I'm fine with it and this is how I feel about it and this is how I feel about failure. I just said the one thing that is kind of embarrassing is to fail publicly and I was feeling reluctant to talk about it on my channel. I felt like some of you would have questions and sooner or later I would have to address it but I was feeling kind of embarrassed to do so and not super keen to do so really and I said to her like when I'm ready I'll talk about it and she actually made me see it differently. She said to me that I have no idea how many people I would help by talking about the things I talked to her about and how I feel about failure and what went wrong and why they went wrong and what we're doing now and and when she said that it was like it just changed everything for me knowing that this video might help somebody out there to think differently about failure just to to play a part in being real and putting out there counterculture something talking about failure rather than just going hey look at all my successes and then being quiet about failures which is what most people do i just it changed everything for me and now i really want to make this video and i really want to talk about it with you because that is what's happening at the moment everybody is sharing their highlights and their successes and that's all you see everywhere and you don't see people fail or you don't see people talking about failures really and then you can be left thinking you're the only one but everybody fails everybody has failures whether you lose a bunch of money or your relationship fails or you lose a job or you lose your house or you fail a test or you forget to pick up your kids at school or you bomb when you're doing a presentation at work everybody has failures and i think how you think about them and how you deal with those failures can create resilience in you. It's really, really scary to take risks and it's scary when those risks don't pay off and when things go wrong, but it's part of being human and you have to take risks if you want to grow and if you want to move forward and if you want to be successful. Nobody ever just has a straight path to success. There are always going to be failures along the way and you're never gonna to get to success if you don't take those risks and learn to overcome those failures and keep moving forward okay so how and why our business failed so when we bought the business we were we'd been looking for a while and grant and i that's my husband if you're new here we were looking for a business that we could work on together that we could grow and that potentially he could leave his job for and eventually come on board and it could be our family business and that's what we wanted and that's what we wanted for a long time and we wanted something that was successfully trading that we didn't have to build up from scratch we have tried starting a business before and that failed and we wanted something that had a reputation that had a customer base that had suppliers that was already up and running and when we found rebalance which if you don't know is an online store soon to be was an online store selling natural and organic household products and makeup and it was successful and it was doing well and the numbers are good and we thought this is great and this is something that we're interested in this is something that we can each bring something to the table we can grow this business and we can work on this together so we bought the business and immediately there was no indication to customers that it had changed hands until we told them nothing was done differently except for two things but immediately that we took over sales dropped and we were like what is going on we then found out that the month before we bought the business google changed their algorithm and particularly targeted any products or any stores where the products are making health claims or claims of healing and when you're selling products like himalayan salt lamps and crystals and healing clay to put in your bath or like skin products or any of these kind of natural products and there were also some kind of supplement products that we were phasing out and that the previous owner had been phasing out but they were still present in the store 
Google's going to hit that. So that was a blow and not something within our control. And the second thing is, and I think this is quite a major thing and I'm kind of a bit peeved about it, but the person that we bought the business from, about a month or so before we bought the business, she turned off Google ads. I don't know why, maybe to save money, whatever, but when you do that, you can't just pick up where you left off and just go and turn them back on again. You have to re, you kind of have to start from scratch and you have to re-establish your website's reputation with Google to get it to rank. And those two things nailed the business. So our sales weren't doing that well, but we kept persevering. We phased out products we weren't interested in carrying and some of those problematic problems. We started working with an SEO guy, that's search engine optimization. He actually turned out to be kind of a waste of money. We spent a lot of money on this guy and he did a lot of analyzing and sending us huge long essays that Grant would try and decipher when actually we wanted someone to analyze and then tell us what to do and then make those changes, which we eventually found someone to do that. But yeah, so there were those kind of outgoings and we just kept pushing forward. The business was making enough money to keep itself going, but it wasn't turning a profit. At least it wasn't making a loss, but it wasn't turning a big enough profit that we were even drawing a salary. And as time went on, Grant and I became kind of resentful about the business. It ended up not being something we could work on together, which, duh, he's working a full-time job outside the home. And what would happen is I would be working on rebalance during the day, and then he would come home from a day of work and then he would be working on rebalance in the evening. So he was essentially working two jobs and he wanted to talk to me about things at nine o'clock at night and I wasn't interested. I'm like, I've been doing this all day. I don't want to do this now. I want to go to bed now. So not only was it something we couldn't work on together, it was actually taking time away from our together. Like it was stealing together time from us and it was actually taking us apart from each other. So we weren't like fighting it or like troubling our marriage or anything, but it just... It was something that he was spending time on it on an opposite end of the day that I was and we weren't really doing it together. I was getting fed up because as you know I scaled back how many videos I was able to upload on YouTube and I was sitting thinking I'm taking time away from the thing that makes me money to spend more time on the thing that's not making me money. Like what is wrong with this picture? And if you're spending a lot of time and energy on something and not being rewarded for it that's a recipe for burnout. So the thing is, you don't know what you don't know. You can do as much research as you can, but until you're actually working in a job, you don't really know what it's like. And as time went on, we just decided this is something that we didn't want to continue doing. We went and saw our accountant and had him look over everything. We were like, are we doing something wrong? And he said, no, you're doing everything right. In fact, you've improved your margins. You're doing really well. You just need to increase sales. And we were trying to do that. We were trying to get our reputation established on Google for the Google ads. And the outgoings were just going up because we were having to get in an expert to do that kind of that side of things. But then also things like Facebook ads, which used to have a daily minimum spend of $5, they changed their daily minimum spend to $30. So, you know, it just, you have to make a decision to either spend exponentially more or just to not use that avenue of advertising. We also noticed that a lot of the products that we were selling were starting to become much more mainstream. So a few years ago, if you wanted to buy stainless steel straws, you would have to go online to Cali Woods or a site like Rebalance to buy your stainless steel straws. Now you can buy them at the warehouse. If you wanted to buy Himalayan salt lamps, you used to have to go online or to a specialist store. Now you can buy them at Kmart, you can buy them at Bunnings, you can buy them at Mighty 10, things like that. And it was a constant kind of struggle to keep finding new products that people couldn't just get easily and conveniently at a local store or at a supermarket. Also, when you're competing with these huge, huge chains, they can compete on price where we couldn't because we're placing much smaller orders with our suppliers than they are. And also they have a much bigger budget to spend on Google ads or Facebook ads. And, and so if you're selling a similar product, you're just not going to rank as well next to them. So all of this is ticking along and we'd made the decision to make an exit, but we were kind of like, we can't sell a business that's not turning a decent profit. You're not going to be able to sell it for much. So we were kind of working with our accountant towards an exit and then 
coronavirus happened or COVID-19 and my dad was like what's that got to do with it it actually hit a lot of industries in New Zealand so much is imported into New Zealand and so much is imported from China and it's really hit sales here and we saw it hit our sales and for the first time we actually faced making a loss and Grant and I talked about it we're like we're exiting anyway we don't want to keep doing this it hasn't been profitable so we can't sell so our only option is to shut down and if we're going to start making a loss now's the time to draw the line and then with 31st of March being the end of the financial year that just created a natural deadline and a week or so ago we decided that's it let's shut this down so we put on our website that we were closing down on the 31st of March I put this on Instagram and Facebook as well and everything on our site is 40% off come and get it because everything has to clear and I thought that it would take a while to clear stock even though I'd curated the stock to levels and products that I knew would sell and I thought we were in a good place to clear but it was still going to take a while overnight we had 150 over 150 orders it was insane Grant and I went to bed at 2 in the morning we'd just been picking and packing orders all evening I had five hours of sleep and woke up and went straight out to the cabin to pick and pack for another five plus hours it was crazy our orders have gone back to the same levels since that initial first rush we do still have some stock if you want to stock up on anything before the 31st of March get it now because when it's gone it's gone so that is what happened with our business it wasn't profitable we couldn't sell it and we ended up just shutting it down so the aftermath and how are we feeling about it and all that jazz luckily Grant and I are on the same page we both feel totally fine about it this is a project that didn't work out this project failed that doesn't mean that we are failures and I think that is so so important when you think about failure this thing failed that doesn't mean that you are a failure that's so important and that's what creates resilience if you can say oh well and I would rather live my life saying oh well this didn't work then what if and have all these dreams and aspirations and never actually try but you have to say oh well you have to learn how to say that and to disengage the thing that you did from who you are and that can be difficult especially when you put your heart and soul into something or if it's a relationship because you're half of that relationship or if it's something that you've created and it doesn't work out it can be hard to extract that from you know who you are and accept that this is just a project but it's really really important to not take on the identity of this thing that failed it stings especially when you lose money so yes we have incurred some debt with the business loan which will end up in my name or in our name and that sucks I look at it as we've lost time we were going to pay our mortgage off in the next few years it's going to take longer now to clear the debt but we're calling it school fees we always say write it off to school fees we've lost some money we have learned so so much we've learned so much in the last year and a bit and one of the things we've learned is we don't actually want to own a business this is a dream that we've been holding on to for 20 plus years and finally that's put to bed we don't actually want to own a business anymore there is such a luxury in Grant going to work doing his job and then coming home and leaving it at work and getting a set salary every month there's such a luxury in my work where I can do Airbnb I can do YouTube I can take on other projects that can earn money and do it on my own terms and things that I'm passionate about and we are so grateful that we're in that position that we're able to do that no experience is ever ever wasted and we've learned this with past failures as well you can always take something from the project from the experience from the relationship from whatever's failed you can learn something from that you can take something forward it's not completely wasted it may be a higher price than you wanted to pay for those lessons but you can still take those lessons and take some value from it at the end of the day failure means you tried something and that's what we're here to do we're here to have experiences to create things to take risks to try to move forward and failure is going to be a part of that unfortunately and if you can learn to step over your failures and keep moving forward that's what's going to bring you success in the end rather than getting bogged down and stuck behind this failure and making it bigger than it is it sucks to fail it hurts it stings it hurts your pride it is embarrassing when other people see you fail but it's just part of life 
So here's my video telling you about our failure. We tried something, it didn't work out, and now we're moving forward and we're okay with it. I hope this video helps somebody out there. I really, really do, honestly. It really changed everything for me when Leith pointed out that this may help somebody because that's what I really want to do with my videos. I don't just make videos as light entertainment. Some of them are, but I really want to help somebody. I want to give you a different way of thinking about something or just be an example of here's how not to do it or whatever. I want my videos to make a difference to you and I really, really hope that this one does. Keep taking risks, keep moving forward, keep trying things and just step over them and move forward if some of those things end up as being failures. I really hope this video hasn't come across as preachy or anything like that. I'm honestly just sharing our experience and how I feel about it and I hope that it has some value. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.